Hello everyone and welcome to Rock Studios. I'm Lucy Caton, the brand lead for Europe, Middle East and Africa at Rockwell Automation. And I'm joined here today by Maria Els, Senior Global Product Manager at Rockwell Automation. Maria, hey. welcome. Hey Lucy, thank you. And Andrew Cortiella. Andrew is the Lifecycle Services Commercial Manager for Europe, Middle East and Africa at Rockwell Automation. Andrew, welcome to the, welcome to the studio. Thank you for having me here, Lucy. It's great to have you both. So today we're going to talk about everything that you need to know about the new NIST 2 directive. So this is a really important topic. Absolutely. Let's get right into it. Thank you. So my first question, Maria, mm -hmm. um, why has the European Parliament adopted this new directive to improve cyber resilience and incidents responses now? Sure. As we've seen over the last 15 odd years, cybersecurity incidents in the world are increasing. Since the pandemic, the increase has been significant. Um, we've seen that there's a, a major increase in the amount of attacks focused a lot on critical infrastructure, as well as the, the change um, in attack and more and more intelligence behind that. So the threat is growing. So the EU has looked to introduce regulation, a directive to help try and mitigate that and impose some controls on many different industries to help them become more um, effective at beating cybersecurity and to have some forms of um, regulation uh, and potential impact to those companies. So in improving cyber hygiene as a whole across the, the EU is an important factor. That sounds really critical to continue business operations. Absolutely. So, um, Andrew, if I could ask you then, um, how will NIST 2 directly impact manufacturers? And why has manufacturing been included in this directive, in your opinion? Yeah, if we look at the IT sector, cybersecurity is always that has been always present because even if it was about storing data or doing transactions, it, the, there was a need to do it in a secure way. In the OT side, the main concern is about production, having the plant running, uh, op op overall equipment effectiveness, uh, no shutdown, no unscheduled downtime. And cybersecurity has become an uh, issue that the plants need to solve as uh, we <laughs> uh, as we um, have the connected factories uh, in networks. Mm. Sure. And so if I could ask you to, to uh, take that a little bit further. So what are the consequences of non-compliance? Are they limited to fines or will they also affect senior leadership teams? No, definitively f there are fines in the NIST2 regulations and this is a, a new point and they are relevant. Uh, we are talking about up to 10 million euros or up to 2% of the annual revenue worldwide for the company. But more important is that management could be held legally accountable in case of non-compliance to the directive. And, and that's obviously going to be, you know, really important for businesses to take into consideration because of that legal compliance, for sure. So, Maria, my mm -hmm. final question to you. Sure. What strategies can manufacturers employ to make themselves compliant before this deadline arrives? Sure. So there's many, many different strategies that can be taken. One thing that we often talk about is understanding what you have. So know what infrastructure you have, know what assets that you have understand your risk and your vulnerabilities and start to plan. Plan you know, what you need to do today, understand what your plan is for the future, know what you have and think about those considerations on how to protect what you have. There are many of the steps that people can start to take to understand how they can secure now and what they need to do for the future. Cybersecurity is changing all of the time. It's evolving. It's becoming more of a, um, an industry in itself. So let's take those steps now, plan and secure your environment to help protect you today and in the future. That's great context and it sounds like it's very key to, to have a strategy. Absolutely, absolutely. We see today that people don't know necessarily where to start, so think about what your current cybersecurity posture is and develop that strategy. Have um, governance in place, have policies and procedures in place and think about the cybersecurity posture, think about training your staff to become more cyber aware in what they're doing in their general actions on a daily basis. That's great. Just uh, to add to these uh, manufacturing companies in just to name a few, uh, life science or uh, chemical, food, uh, water sector could be classified in the NIST2 as essential or important. 
and they need to make sure that they are working towards a cyber security for OT strategy. And uh, if not, if they don't have the policies, the procedures, the process in place, if they, don't, they are not running a cyber program, they need to speed up and act quickly in light of the new, new needs to directive. Absolutely. Because it's just around the corner. I mean, we are talking mid-October 2024, it will be enforced compliance. Absolutely. And I think this deadline then adds, adds that additional need and urgency for a strategy to put in place. So, Maria, Andrew, thank you so much for joining me in the studio today. It's been great to hear your perspective on this. And obviously, you know, this is uh, it's a really key topic to talk about as this NIST 2 directive approaches. Absolutely. So thank, thank you thank for you. joining me. Thank you for having us. Thank you. And thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about industrial security, visit rockwellautomation.com.